All right, ladies and gentlemen, we'll get this meeting underway. I call the meeting to order, 7.30 p.m., August 3rd, 2021. Resolved that the agenda for August 3rd regular meeting of council be adopted, moved by Councillor Delorier, second by Councillor Friesen. All in favor? And confirmation of the minutes, resolved the minutes of the July 20th regular council meeting be approved. Moved by Councillor Morio, second by Councillor Delorier. Discussion? All in favor? It's carried. We have no delegations, hearings, um, petitions, communications uh, to receive building permits. Resolved that building permits 44 slash 21 through 52 slash 21 with a total estimated value of $84,916 be received. Moved by Councillor White, second by Councillor Friesen. Discussion, Councillor White. I'm just looking at uh, 48, 4721, repair ceiling water damage. Somehow I didn't think uh, permits were needed for repairs of terminal like that. Uh, I'd have to double check on that, but uh, I'm pretty sure you would have to get a permit for that. Cause like if you, your house burns down, you got to repair part of it. Then, uh, uh, we talked about smaller renovations within the home and, and that not requiring the permit. Yeah, I'll check with Ron to see if there's anything structural. Okay, I'll also get back to the introduction for Rush. Thank you. Thank you, Councillor White. Further discussion? All in favor? It's carried. Reports of committees? Resolved that the Director of Public Works report be received. Moved by Councillor Morio, second by Councillor White. Discussion? <laughs> that was quick, all three at once. Who am I gonna pick? Uh, Councillor Delorier. Um, I guess I just wanted to uh, congratulate Mr. Harvey and the rest of his team on the work that they've done over the past number of months to, to go from what would have been a patch job, which would have made nobody happy to getting MI on board with the Main Street South uh, project. And, you know, it, it's a frustrating endeavor for the fact that you never could get a commitment, but you guys got us one. Um, and just wanted to extend congratulations and thank you for your hard work on that. Yeah, and I think that was uh, important with council playing their role too on the political end. Uh, to push the province to the MLA. So I think that both of us going at it, we have uh, agreement that work for everyone. Thank you, Councillor Deloria. That was the only one. Councillor White. Uh, a note uh, meeting with the CF foreman to discuss property on the cross repair work. Where is that at? Uh, so they were looking at taking out some trees just by. Uh, old shed they just wanted to confirm that that was their property that they could take the trees out and then the railway tracks uh on the second street north crossing there's the active tracks that go out to um, pioneer and then there's another set of tracks that are abandoned but they haven't been pulled out yet and uh, they're going to pull them out because they're starting to get stick out a little bit and could cause uh issues with vehicles so they pull those out and uh, that'll get covered over. Okay. Refresh my memory because it's not that good. We did some uh, concerns about flooding, not this year, uh, down by where the uh, fire department does the, the work at Salt Gate, where there's a crossing there. Has anything happened with that? Uh, I know Derek had been talking to CN about that and kind of working his way down. I'll have to touch base with him to see. I appreciate it being touch base with Adam on that one too because some of our, our, our constituents live over there and get. Well, this year, they've had regular flooding, and I'm sure it goes beyond that family, too. Yes. Thank you. Thank you, Councillor White. Thank you, Mr. Harvey. Councillor Morio? Uh, two things. Uh, first one, the Chief West, again, 
Uh, thank you very much for all your guys' hard work administration between uh, Mr. Poole and yourself and uh, getting Main Street West done. Hopefully uh, we can uh, start seeing asphalt uh, be laid within the next couple weeks or a week or so. Uh, with that, so that's great. That'd be a big capital uh, project and uh, a project that uh, beautifies our community when you're coming in from the west versus what it is now and what it was. Um, next question is uh, the one below what contacting the environmental office regarding river water use. What's that for? Uh, that came from the mayor. He was asking um, if we regulate people watering their lawns. Uh, from the river. Um, so I had a look at and see that in the bylaws. Uh, so I contacted our environmental officer <coughs> and he got back to me today. And that's not under, not under their purview, but he said, recommend I talk to Conservation District. So that'll be my next call is to them to see uh, who regulates that. And I'll provide that information to the mayor. He's had a general. <coughs> so regarding water, um, with our new wells and all that stuff, are we monitoring the aquifer level on that? That we're yeah. we're well within normal and not going to be into any predicament like we are experiencing down south in Manitoba. Yeah, so far uh, the wells have been good, but uh, and we'll definitely be monitoring that in the future. Okay, perfect. Thanks. Thank you, Mr. Harvey. Thank you, Mr. Morio. Councillor Friesen. That was my question. All Thank right. You. Any further discussion? All in favor? It is carried. Moving on to council and CAO reports. Uh, let's start with uh, Councillor Delorier. Uh, I've got a couple of meetings in the past couple of weeks with regards with uh, my role as chairman of the library board uh, with regards to partnership with the uh, MMF and uh, potential student uh, workers. Um, and other than that, uh, that's about it. And I was on holidays for one week, so I was completely out of service. Other than that, uh, nothing else to report. Excellent. Thank you, Councillor Delorier. Councillor White. Uh, just first, I want to call with uh, Councillor Delorier, because in his relationship with the uh, MMF and, and the library and his team over there. Uh, he's done a wonderful job of making things move smoothly and communicated with all the parties involved. And uh, I was on the periphery of that, very much on the periphery, but uh, all I hear is good things, so thank you, uh, Councillor. Uh, a few calls relatively on, on crime issues, which we talked about briefly. I think it's important for all our constituents to appreciate that if, if there's a problem with some rascals in your area around your home, Please phone the RCMP 3454 and uh, they'll reply. And with the evolution of COPP with uh, Council Mario and Deputy Mayor uh, with Tony's work, there's 17 people out there now. And if there's a common area, I'm sure it's a request of the RCMP that uh, those families, those places could be uh, looked at more often. So uh, the RCMP are very willing to help, very cooperative. I'm not sure where it fits in, but somehow if I was in that area, I might buy a camera. I don't know if that's legal. So. Maybe don't even cross that out, but I would certainly have a, a camera on my property facing my yard. Uh, we and myself and Councilor Morio and Councilor Delorey had a brief meeting with the uh, Minister Major, Federal Cabinet Minister, not a cabinet, Federal MP Major, talking about cell coverage. Uh, I'm not sure I got the answers that I wanted. He says he's working on it. It's a little ambivalent. So they say they're trying to do it, so I appreciate they are. But it didn't sound like government was jumping up and down trying to do it. They're giving that to the, the free enterprise, the Alton Buscan Company. So that concerned me a little, but uh, Mr. Major's trying, he said, so I appreciate that. Uh, a continuum of the saga of uh, UCN and Red River Community College marrying the uh, LPN course with the Red River Community College RN course. I've had two or three calls recently from Red River Community College and PMH has called me and they've arranged a uh, conference call with myself and PMH about how to, how to make that move forward. And uh, bridging those two things would be wonderful for our community. And the other thing they want to talk about is ideas because our community has done so wonderfully 
recruiting doctors. So what I would ask our viewing public, if you have any ideas that would help us uh, recruit medical professionals from all lines, all professions, uh, recruit them, retain them, and if they're leaving, let us know why. Uh, that would be appreciated by uh, the medical recruiting committee. And uh, that's about it for me. Thank you. Thank you, Councillor White. Um, Councillor Friesen. Um, had a meeting with uh, Communities of Care, and um, we basically just talked about how to entice a new program coordinator planner, and they're going to revamp the one they had in the paper and see if it will entice anyone to uh, apply. We did have a line on someone who, in the meantime, got another job, and so we're still looking for someone to replace them again. Other than that, just stay in cool. Thanks. Thank you, Councillor Friesen. Councillor Mario. Uh, a couple of meetings. Uh, last week, uh, I attended via Zoom the uh, AMN Provincial Justice Advisory uh, Committee uh, meeting that, um, where a number of items were discussed. But the main one was a review um, and some of the highlights of the newly uh, I guess ratified RCMP contract, um, collective agreement with uh, Federal Canada and its affiliates along with the RCMP. Um, and as we know, um, there's going to be some significant back pay issued to the, the members along with uh, going forward uh, percentage increases that have uh, been agreed to along with some other um, concessions that was given to them. So. Um, one of the biggest issues uh, that's being presented uh, forward um, was uh, the back pay issue to municipalities that have costs or RCMP contracts directly with the RCMP, such as ourselves. Um, there's going to be a large contingent that's lobbying and uh, getting support with uh, MPs across Canada uh, and regarding to the federal government paying that back pay versus the municipalities since it was um, in the group's opinion that the federal government was negligent in not maintaining the RCP in the top, that we 10% of the police forces across Canada, which was part of their agreement. So a lot of the municipalities are going, that's not our, why should we be on the hook for that back pay when it was a uh, part of the neglect on the federal government on that. So. Hopefully uh, there's some movement on that, but there's a large contingent uh, with AMM and FCM that are dealing with that. Um, I also discussed in depth along uh, with other members there about the crime issues that are in our communities. Um, a uh, co-member of the committee from the PAW um, reiterates that they're having the exact same issues as we are um, and exact same frustrations. Um, along with other communities in there. So Mayor Jacobson has reached out to some other uh, councils and Reeves mayors within our district. And one of the recommendations from AMM was that uh, the mayors hold a quarterly uh, meeting or every two months uh, to discuss issues that are common amongst the municipalities um, in, the, in that region. So, um, so hopefully we can work more on that. Um, Today, um, with uh, or pardon me, I also met with uh, MP Mazur last week regarding a number of issues, and cell service was uh, one of the big issues on there. And as Councilor White said, there was a lot, of, in my mind, a lot of double talk and leave it to the private enterprise to figure out. And uh, um, comes back down to the fiber optic and natural hydro's uh, black network, as I think they called it. Uh, for it, so but, um, <coughs> I don't think it did any daily squat for what our area is. So we'll see what transpires that, but he is says he is working on it. So, but uh, I think some of the education, personally, that he was given may be a little misleading compared to what people on the ground know. Um, today, as we all know, uh, the province uh, starting on August seventh is now. Removing a lot of the COVID-19 restrictions, which is a good 
uh, movement, so moving a lot of restrictions to recommendations. So I applaud everybody in the community uh, for getting their vaccines and uh, helping us move out of this COVID pandemic to, I guess, a regular virus is what they're going to be treating that now. So. And finally, I just want to wish good luck to the two election candidates um, for our election coming up on August 11th in the by-election. So um, I see two of them are going at it. They're pressing the flesh, getting their issues out there, talking to people. So hopefully we have a good turnout and uh, to fill our vacant house position on August 11th um, next month or next week, I should say. Not next month. And that's all I have. Thank you, Councillor Morio. Um, Mr. Harvey, anything in regards to uh, CAO? I know that you reported on Director of Public Works, but anything left for you? Mr. Poole is on vacation and left the helm to you. Yeah, we uh, had a little overlap. Uh, we came out on the first day and just kind of went over things, uh, but there's nothing outstanding. Uh, we have the uh, vaccine taken care of uh, the election, so that's all lined up. And, uh, there's a couple of agreements that uh, council is aware of that didn't have to be And uh, but yeah, if nothing's come up, well, he's been away. Thank you very much. Um, and just from myself, in uh, no particular order. Uh, thank you, Mr. Harvey, Mr. Poole, and the entire administration team, as well as the councillors um, and the mayor in regards to the paving of Main Street West and everybody working together on getting that project <coughs> underway. It's, it's great to see the teamwork and, and uh, all the conversations that are had to result in the outcome that we all are hoping for. So kudos to each and every one of you, and we all appreciate your hard work and efforts. Um, I had the opportunity to meet with MP Mazur in regards to the business consortium and the COP program. He did join in and in the uh, task force meeting that we, uh, or uh, I guess it was uh, prior to the task force meeting, he was able to introduce himself into into the group, uh, wanted to know a lot about that, and we shared that information with him as well. Um, so it's nice to see that we have uh, our local constituents interested in, in, our, in what happens right here in Swan River. So thank you to him. Um, as most of you know, um, we have lost our economic development officer um, who is moving on to other things. We thank Lauren Gray for all her hard work and efforts in, in her time serving as economic development officer, and we wish her well in the future. And to all of our listening audience out there and the residents of Swan River, you have uh, the opportunity to have your voices heard in the by-election, as Councillor Morio mentioned, on August 11th, where we have two candidates running for one position. So please come out and vote um, and have your opinion heard. That is everything I have. Thank you very much. All right, moving on uh, to receive the Swan Lake Watershed District audited financial statements. Resolved that the Swan Lake Watershed District audit, audited financial statements for the year ending March 31st, 2021 be received. Moved by Councillor Delorier, second by Councillor White. Discussion, Councillor Morio. Um, Councillor Dora, you said you sit on there, um, and I tried to see through the, the statements, but did you guys get that um, issue with the reserves all sorted out? Um, well, it, it is all sorted out, and it, it was an issue where the audited statements don't necessarily uh, you know, care where, what account you keep things in. So as far as the accounting on the day-to-day -day side of things was, there was no uh, debiting from the books when they would run a deficit. So their reserve was not nearly as high as they were anticipating. They, they, it's been all accounted for, yeah. 
neck wound that was just difficult to follow the numbers through the it, auditors. It doesn't really show in here because this just looks at it as one part of money and, and where is it? Versus ledger accounts. Yeah. Okay. Thank you, Councillor Morio. Further discussion? All in favor? It's carried. Moving on to Main Street West Paving Agreement. Um, resolved that council, council enter into an agreement with Manitoba Infrastructure to receive funding for the pavement portion of, two, of the 200 to 300 block Main Street Utility Renewal Project. Moved by Councillor White, second by Councillor Friesen. Discussion? Councillor Morio. Um, I forgot to mention earlier, but uh, a lot of this funding from Main Street is, is good on part to a lot of uh, MLA Wolchuk's lobbying, uh, the Minister of Infrastructure and the local uh, cohorts on that. So it's one of the few wins that he's having within the uh, the riding. So, and it's a, a big one for us in the town here. So this wouldn't be possible without his um, working on the interiors of the, the governance bureaucracy in Winnipeg. So, thank you probably for that. Councillor White. Relative to uh, Council Morris comments, as I absolutely appreciate it. I think it'd be appropriate to your, your, your honor to have a, a letter come from your office saying, hey, uh, MLA Wojcik has been a long haul. It's been tough on him, tough on us. But uh, I know he's had a significant uh, contribution of time and energy, numerous meetings with the MLA minister to make this happen. So uh, just a note of thanks. Uh, he's getting a lot of <coughs> other kinds of comments relative to COVID and the like. And uh, the good things go unnoticed. And uh, I think they'd be so much appreciated by from your office. Absolutely. Thank you, Councillor White. This is the third pen that I'm going through. I I wonder if that's I think that four. <laughs> we'll see if we, we, we can see if we can get through this meeting here. <laughs> there we go. Um, I'll look back to further further discussion. Nothing further. All in favor? It is carried. And now to approve some accounts. Resolved that the accounts as follows be hereby approved for payment general account checks number 27831 to number 27901, totaling $193,896.55 as listed on Schedule A. Payroll account checks number 4910 to number 4917, totaling $85,292.61 as listed on Schedule B. Direct deposits in the amount of $2,437.65 as per Schedule C. Direct deposits totaling $600 as listed on Schedule D. And direct deposits in the amount of $7,111.62 as per Schedule E. Moved by Councillor Morio, second by Councillor Delorier. Discussion. I'll give you a minute to look through those. Councillor Morio. Uh, check number 27858. N3 Sales Inc. Who are, the, who are they? 27858. Fire Department Phone Agency. We do have Mr. Ganita online. If he, uh, Mr. Harvey, if you. I haven't seen that one. Terry, are you, or CFO Ganita, are you aware of? Which company that is? Yeah. Yes, it's a fire department phone paging contract for one year. Ah, okay. Thank you. Thank you, thank you, Mr. Ganita. Council Morio, did you have another one? No, nope, that's the only one mm -hmm. that I didn't recognize. I'll give you a couple more minutes to browse through those. <clears throat> Thank you. 
further discussion or a few more minutes? Hearing nothing, all those in favor? It is approved and carried. Have no bylaws, notice of motion, and I have nothing in camera as well. So resolve that this regular meeting of council now adjourn at 7.55 p.m. Moved by Councillor Friesen, second by Councillor Delorier. All those in favor, it is carried. Thank you very much. Have a good evening.